Being supercharged to me means that you have incredible energy. I have a lot more energy to keep up with my kids. The extreme cold is my extreme warm friend. Now, if you get supercharged, all the people around you start to get supercharged too. Certain kinds of waters not only are good for your health, but I've seen evidence that they can actually reverse irreversible pathologies. This is the future. We have like 60 million kids and, and young adults. And, 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 the, and the awesome statistic is this. This could be the first generation that don't outlive their parents. So now instead of longevity going up, now it's gonna be going down. A lot of us are hobbling. We're not moving the right way. We're carrying extra weight. We're sluggish, we're slow. I was very uh, obese, severely obese. I was um, over 320 pounds. I was uh, just really unhealthy and very tired and sick all the time. 20 years ago, chronic fatigue syndrome wasn't, wasn't really a recognized illness and, and especially things like adrenal fatigue were just, were just not really heard of. But at that time, I was only 22, and literally, literally, it looked like my life was over, and nobody knew what to do. And I thought to myself, well, probably the best way of getting over this illness is to just climb and do loads of exercise. And I thought, you know, all the fresh air and good food and, and, mount, and mountain exercise would, would, would heal me. Uh, nothing could have been further from the truth, and obviously, if I'd known what I know now, that that so I was so strong-willed actually just pushing and pushing actually just took me you know all, all the way down to sort of sort of almost the bottom it's like I had all this willpower to, to try things and try and get out of it but 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 my body literally didn't didn't have the energy to, to, to do anything with it once I got back to England and sort of started this this eight year long journey of of having a full, full, full on bed bound chronic fatigue. It was very difficult to see your son, who's a bouncy, healthy, active person, slipping downhill completely. Um, you felt completely helpless. Our conventional doctors here um, just, they said, well, you've got this virus, and we didn't know what to do about it. So Sarah, how I went from sickly sludge to supercharged is firstly I activated my body's healing system using energy medicine, but the second thing I did was learn how to use other sources of energy outside of food. What I'd like to know is what is the science behind how to use those other sources of energy? Because traditional biochemistry doesn't really cover that. So I'd like to speak to some experts in that field. Uh, I'm thinking of people like Professor Jerry Pollock. There's so much evidence that water is so central to everything that the body does. And then also Dr. Stephen Sinatra, who's written about grounding or earthing. 
and how you can get electrons into your body through that way. What people don't realize is that these vibrations are unseen forces. And perhaps we can look at other sources of energy like light, uh, movement, those kinds of things. And what I'd also like to do is go and meet a number of biohackers who are taking this idea of how to increase their body's energy to a whole other level. Because although I've cured myself of chronic fatigue, I'd like to have even more energy so I'm able to achieve more from life. And the first person I'd like to go and interview is Dave Asprey of Bulletproof because he was able to go from obese and having a low amount of energy to now being pretty much a superhuman business machine. Bottom line is my body is an amazing piece of equipment that is designed to survive in the environment around it. I'd also like to go and meet Wim Hof who is the Iceman and is able to climb up Everest just in his underwear which we would all love to do I'm sure. They think they are not able to go into ice water and that very mind is crippling them. And also Abel James who is got an incredible amount of energy and is known as the fat burning man. In every point in history the biggest mistake that, that societies in general have made is that we know everything right now and we will move forward based upon all of those assumptions. And also Ben Greenfield who is a athletic machine. So when the light bulb went on for me, when, when I realized that the way that I was training, the way I was eating, my environment, everything was not allowing me to have the longevity that I wanted. And then perhaps we should also visit some lay people, some people who are actually putting all of these things into practice and see how they're getting on. Yeah, I mean, there's some incredible stories like Jeremy, who has cystic fibrosis, but you would never know it because he does all of this rock climbing and has a huge amount of energy for life. I was born supercharged and I want to stay that way. And then there's Kate Towler and her kids who have basically managed to help reverse the autism of her kids. Ryan, our son, has autism which makes the mix a little bit interesting between the weight loss and the autism. And we also have Joe Polish, who was originally a drug addict, but has managed to transform his life through movement and exercise, and also through changing his mental habits. And so somehow I learned that I can create my own internal power. I can learn how to do this. Okay, so once we've spoken to some of our experts and our biohackers, we should have a good idea of how to get energy in the body and how to maintain energy and have that energy for life. Let's go and do it. I have cystic fibrosis. I was diagnosed when I was four months old. So the biggest frustration is whenever they try to compare one patient to another, when there's so many things that are different about us that make up really who we are. In spite of following this advice from my doctor and traditional media so well, I was at, at basically in, this, in the worst health of my entire life. Why are people still so sick and tired? Why are people still settling for mediocrity and just being free of symptoms as a way of life rather than sort of living an optimized and supercharged life a one-size-fits-all approach to health doesn't work we're all different we're all genetically different why is the medical system so slow to take up this information so the crazy thing is that people will see like, like, let's say, for example, a bodybuilder, right? They'll see a bodybuilder on stage and the person looks good, right? They're, they're, they're like our society's expectation of what extreme manliness or, or, or extreme femininity. But what it takes to get that kind of body, at least the stereotypical approach, then you take a closer look. And this is what I did to myself. And when you look at what's going on in the inside, You've got somebody who's healthy on the outside, but they're dying on the inside. From a guy that refused to sit in a box, <laughs> I, my cubicle was killing me and I knew it. When I was 16, I took control and I stopped doing everything I was supposed to. I learned then that I can crash this thing if I want to. 
I started listening to my body. I definitely woke up one day and realized this is mine and nobody knows more about it than I do. I want to be moving. I want to be working hard and everything about my disease is about momentum and I'm not willing to give that up. It's always been about staying ahead and um, I'm not trying to outsmart my doctors or trying to make them feel dumb but sometimes I feel like the tools that, we, that we're using, uh, the ones that are in bottles and pills and IV bags, maybe that's not, maybe that's not the most effective ones. Oh, I, don't, I don't think medicine is really there to get answers. I mean, they're basically there to keep people taking drugs as long as possible because it's the only way they can maximise their profits. I don't know. I mean, I do think there is a place for drugs and I think it's acute care, but I do think for chronic conditions, it definitely seems to be failing. Oh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, for acute care, all good, but most, most illness is nothing to do with acute care. Doctors, the hospitals, pharmacies, pills, medicines, and all kinds of shit making us not happy, but unhappy, and uh, not healthy, but sick. Most of us uh, are led to believe that our energy comes from food, and of course, um, that w we we know that to be the case. You know, we eat and we feel energized. However, that's not the only source of energy. So fundamentally, what life comes down to is energy. We need energy for everything we do. We need energy to move. We need energy for motivation, for passion, for thought. So life is energy. <laughs> Don't worry, you're not turning red at all. <laughs> One more, you got it. Well, for me, having a lot of energy means that I can get out there and do everything that I want to do in life. I think a lot of people that I certainly see around me are sick and tired of being sick and tired all the time. So to have that energy in your life, really, for a lot of people, it just means that they can just do all of the things that they haven't been able to do, whether that is looking after the children, getting further in their career, whether it's just having time at the weekend to do the things they like instead of just crashing out on the couch after a week at work. So really, you know, having that energy, being supercharged, is really such a fundamental thing. And really, it's in everybody's reach. It's, there are very simple ways to get this energy. Energy is the most important building block for life. And for instance, when you don't have any energy, you can't really do anything, you can't, you can't have a career, you can't be happy, you end up diseased and ill, which is what happened to me. And the opposite of that is when you have abundant energy, you have a, like a super lightning quick mind, you're much happier, you're able to flourish in your career. And in short, you know, the, the happiest, most successful people have abundant energy for life. Everybody knows that we get energy from food, but really, when you think about it from a fundamental point of view, food is just electrons and movement of electrons. And it's electrons flowing through a, a chain that cause the release of energy in the body. If you think about how food gives you energy, it gives you electrical energy. And a lot of people say, what, electricity? Like, I'm not a battery. Well, parts of you kind of are like that. Because what happens is you eat food and glucose or fat or protein, these things eventually, we hope, unless they're stored as fat or excreted, they turn into ATP, which is the primary thing that the mitochondria in our cells use. So they generate ATP. They use ATP to get an electron. That would be electrical. <laughs> and once they generate that electron that fuels the cell, then they recycle ATP through a process in humans that's kind of like what most people know what happens in plants with photosynthesis.
I've been in, you know, steeped in exercise science and nutrition science for decades. And what everybody preaches is the way that you get that ATP is with calories, right? You, you, you eat the right protein and carb and fat ratios and you know you get your pre and your post-workout nutrition and you make sure that you have your breakfast and that you eat frequently and you keep your metabolism elevated. But what people don't realize is that only accounts for a fraction of the energy that your body's actually able to produce. The body is neither chemical nor electrical, it's both. And if you don't believe me, then walk into a taser and see what happens. <laughs> like we know if you put a, a strong shock on someone, something happens. We measure the flow of electrons across nerves. It's called a nerve conductance study. So we know we're electrical. We just like to think that we're chemical. And that's a broken model because you can affect the electricity with chemicals and you can affect chemicals with the electricity.